in the last lecture, I gave you this definition of shear stress. So this is basically the shear stress of soil at the state of failure. The uh, previous lecture, we were basically focusing on the stress in the soil mass. That's what small circle of stress is for. And for today's lecture, we're going to focus on this second item here. So to determine the shear strength of soil, you need to know the stress in the soil, but also you have to have a criterion to determine failure. So that's what, what we're going to focus today. Okay. So what, what do we call a failure in the soil? Okay. And there are many different failure criteria. The most commonly used one in soil mechanics is this more coolant failure criteria. So that's the topic for today's lecture. And that's basically the second bullet point in part one of this chapter, more coolant failure criteria. So to introduce this more coolant failure criterion, first I want to start with this soil element here. So this is a soil element sheared to failure, and this is from a triaxial test. Okay, so this is in a triaxial test. Later in this chapter, if you look at our uh, chapter outline, part three focuses on triaxial test. So we'll learn much more about triaxial test in chapter three. Very briefly, triaxial test basically, so if I draw a soil element. So what you do in a triaxial test is basically, first you apply some confining stress And we call this confining stress sigma three, if it's a, it's, if it's in terms of total stress, or we can also write report the results in terms of effective stress sigma three prime. And then during the triaxial test, you shear the soil specimen to failure by applying an axial loading on top, or vertical loading on top, and that is sigma one in total stress or sigma one prime if it's in effective stress. So basically you are sharing the soils to failure by applying that vertical loading, that axial loading. On the right hand side, this is basically a soil specimen sheared to failure during this triaxial test. Again, as I mentioned, there are different types of triaxial tests, which we'll talk more in part three of this chapter. So we'll spend quite a few lectures on this topic. But um, for this soil element here, we talked about more circle of stress in the previous lecture. Given this sigma one and sigma three, so these are basically your major and minor principal stresses at failure, I can actually plot the more circle. So I'm going to plot the normal stress, uh, let's plot the effective stress one and the shear stress. And we can construct a more circle given this combination of sigma one and sigma three at failure. So I'm going to plot so we have sigma one, let's plot in term of effective stress, sigma one, sigma three prime, and we can construct this more circle. Okay. Something we discussed in the previous lecture. So this is a more circle, and each point on this more circle is basically a combination of normal and shear stress at different planes, okay, at different orientation. And for this soil element, Clearly, there is a failure plane. This is very obvious. So this is where a sample fails. And the angle of this failure plane, so let's call that angle from horizontal direction theta. Okay. So that's the angle of this failure plane we call theta. And on this plane theta, we have a combination of normal and shear stress. So let's call that normal stress sigma prime. And then that shear stress, I'm going to call this tau f. So this is basically the shear stress on the failure plane or the shear stress at the state of failure. Okay. So that's, I'm going to call that f, tau f. And we can identify this combination of sigma prime and tau f on this more circle. Okay. And the way to do that, so last time we talked about the pole method. For this soil element subjected to this uh, principal stresses, sigma one, sigma three, if you look at example two of this chapter, that's basically this uh, triaxial state, 
we know this is the pole of the Mohr circle. It's right here. Again, if you want to know how we find this pole, just look at example two. Okay. So this is a pole of this Mohr circle. And if we draw a line from this Mohr, uh, this pole that is parallel to the failure plane, So this line is at an angle theta from the horizontal direction. So it's parallel to the failure plane. Okay. And this line is going to intersect your more circle and the intersection here, that's the normal and shear stress on the failure plane. So that's basically that sigma prime and tau f. Okay. So that's the point representing normal and shear stress on the failure plane. Again, this is basically example two we did in the previous lecture. So this is one soil element. Then if you repeat this test, so if you repeat this triaxial test on a similar specimen made up of the same material, so you can repeat this and then conduct another set of triaxial tests under different confining stress. So you change sigma three, soil is going to fail at a different sigma one prime level. It's going to, you're going to have a new combination of sigma three and sigma one prime. And you can repeat this multiple times. For each soil specimen at failure, you're going to have a more circle just as what I'm showing here on this side. So that's what's shown right here. So if you focus now, let's focus on just the solid circles or half circles. So this is, okay. so this is soil specimen one. Okay. And there are a couple others on this side. So this is another more circle at failure. And the third one. Okay. As I mentioned, each more circle represents basically the stress of a soil specimen. And we're plotting the more circle at failure. And each more circle has a different combination of that sigma three and sigma one, or sigma three prime, sigma one prime. And for each of these more circles at failure, we can identify that failure point. just as what we did in the previous one. So we can identify this. This is sigma prime tau f. So that's the normal and the shear stress on the failure plane corresponding to that soil specimen. So this is. So this is normal. So this is the normal and shear stresses on the failure plane of this is soil specimen three. So if this is specimen three. Okay. So we can identify one failure point for each more circle. And if you connect all these points, you get an envelope. So that's what's called a failure envelope. This is basically First more contribution, so part one of this more coolant failure envelope. So this is Morse envelope. In, in Morse envelope, basically this shear stress at failure, we call tau f, is a function of this normal stress on that failure plane. So in Moore's theory, basically, the material will fail if that shear stress on certain plane reaches some critical value. That critical value is tau f, and that critical value depends on the normal stress on that plane. Okay. So that's Moore's theory. Okay. 
failure theory. And this envelope is a curved line. So this Morse failure envelope is actually a curved line. And a couple of things I want to point out here. So first, the intersection of this Morse failure envelope with the Morse circle is close to the top, but it's not at the top of the Morse circle. So intersection. So by intersection, I'm referring to the inter intersection of the failure envelope with the Mohr circle. Okay. So. so intersection is at near the top, but it's not at the top, which means material fails not at the maximum shear stress, but at a critical combination of shear and normal stress. Okay, so that's very important. And the second point is the original Morse failure envelope is actually a curve. As shown on this slide, it's actually a curved line. It's not a straight line. So this is Moore's failure envelope in part D, uh, part B of this Moore coolant failure criterion is actually where coolant came in. And for many soil mechanics problem for many geomaterials. Okay. So we can actually approximate this Moore's failure envelope. So that's more coolant failure envelope. So more coolant failure envelope is actually a straight line approximation of that envelope. Okay. So basically we use a straight line approximation to approximate this failure envelope and it's found to be sufficiently accurate for most geotechnical engineering problems. So, and it's also much easier to use since it's a straight line. So this more coolant failure envelope looks like, so this straight line here, this is basically that more coolant failure envelope. In this more coolant failure envelope or this more coolant failure criterion is the most commonly used failure criterion for geotechnical engineering problems for soils. And since it's a straight line, there is basically just two strength parameters. You can use two strength parameters to define this straight line and this approximate the failure envelope as a straight line. So these two strength parameters, so if you look at this figure here, one is basically the angle of this slope or the angle of this straight line we call phi prime, which is the angle of friction or angle of internal friction. And the second strength parameter is intersection this with the shear stress axis, the y-axis, that's called uh, cohesion, so C prime here. Okay. So this is basically the more coolant failure envelope. Again, two strength parameters, phi prime, C prime, if it's in effective stress space, or phi and C if it's a total stress. The other thing I want to mention for, if you have this more coolant failure envelope failure criterion, then you can predict if a material fails or not for a given plane. So I'm listing three cases here. So for these three points, A, B, and C, so each point is a combination of normal and shear stress. So this is say sigma A and tau at A. Okay. 
So if the normal and shear stress corresponding to this point A, which is on certain plane, falls below this failure envelope, this means this material is not failing, so it's okay. So material is safe. It plots below this more coolant failure envelope. If material point B here, you have this combination of normal and shear stress such that it plots on this more circle or on this more coolant failure envelope, so sigma B. And then this tau is tau failure at B. So this means the material fails. So by this more coolant failure criterion, this material B or this combination of normal and shear stress fails. And then C, this is not possible by more coolant failure criterion. So basically, if you have this combination of normal and shear stress, such as this uh, point C here, material would have already failed okay, by more coolant failure criteria. So this is uh, basically that more coolant failure envelope and if you write this straight line in a functional form, it's basically a simple straight line functional form. And we can write it as, so let's write it in both total and uh, effective stress. So this tau f, that's a shear stress at failure. That's what we define as shear strings. So this is basically the shear strength. It's a combination of shear and the normal stress. So it depends on the normal stress and these two strength parameters. C and the phi, again, these two strength parameters, cohesion and angle of internal friction. And sigma here, this is the normal stress. This is in terms of total stress. You can also write this MC failure criterion in terms of effective stress. So the shear strength is C prime plus sigma prime tangent of phi prime. In, in this effective stress, more coolant uh, failure criterion, these two parameters, they are the cohesion and friction angle based on the effective stress. And this phi prime, this is also called the drained friction angle. And this C prime parameter, that cohesion term is approximately zero. If it's sand inorganic suits or NC clays, normally consolidated clays. And for overly consolidated clays, the C prime is not zero, it's not zero. Sigma prime, again, it's a normal stress, but it's an effective normal stress. So that's a more coolant failure criterion. So this table shows here the typical values of friction angles in sand. If you look at this range of friction angles, so this is the drained friction angle. Remember, that's our phi prime basin. And this drained friction angle for sand depends on the relative density and also depends on basically the shape of the sand greens. For rounded greens and for loose material, you have a smaller friction angle, so 27 to 30. As you increase the relative density, the friction angle increases as well. So denser sand, you have more friction, so you have more resistance to failure, basically. For angular greens, sand with angular greens, again, you have higher friction angle. And the highest possible for dense sand, 40 to 45 degree. In gravel with some sand, 33 to 48. In inorganic suits, 26 to 35. So this table basically gives you some range of friction angle. At least you know what's a proper range of effective or drain friction angle.